And when you get that hot dog out with that food, it's tunnel vision, baby. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. Thanks for joining me today. Here's Lakota. I'm at the Upstate Canine Academy. I'm going to be answering some very frequently asked questions from you guys. The topic of discussion today is something we see all the time here at the Upstate Canine Academy. I think a lot of beginner dog trainers and a lot of beginner dog owners will make them this mistake very, very often, which will be detrimental to your training in the future and your sustainability of obedience. And so today I'm going to be talking about how to wean your dog off the dependency of the food motivator which basically means my dog won't do anything unless food is involved. So I'm gonna be going over some real simple tips on how to get out of that funk, as well as how it's created. Now I'll be the first to tell you I use food in almost all the training I do, but a lot of times the food comes in the middle or at the end of the training for the icing on top. Now I love using food to motivate the dog to try new behaviors. I love luring the dog with food to create new behaviors, and I'll be the first to tell you that. However, you have to be really careful how you use food in the preliminary stages of building behaviors. So if you think about it, if you get into a training class and you cut up a half a pack of hot dogs or a whole pack of hot dogs, pretty much any animal that eats meat is gonna follow you around the room, which is okay if that's what you're looking to do. But at what point does it become feeding versus training? And I see that very frequently. You go to a training class, they say, bring your hot dogs. The dogs get really excited. They salivate like that. I don't have hot dogs, but she just loves anything. And they get really excited to work, which is fantastic. I love motivating dogs and creating euphoria for them to train and work and, new, and learn new stuff. However, I've also taught this to seven-year-olds at the 4-H club on how to lure animals around with food. So it's a very, very easy step to do but you have to be careful on the difference between feeding and training. And that's where a lot of people make that mistake. You get that food out, the dog doesn't know you, they don't know what you're asking, and you're doing this, and you're doing this, and you're doing this, and you're saying, good job, good job, good job. But the dog and the animal, go touch, is so motivated and so focused on the food that at that point, you're not training, you're feeding. Now it's the same thing I talk about very often on the other end of the spectrum of being very careful how you apply pressure corrections, discipline, structure, all that stuff, you have to meet somewhere in the middle to be fair to the learning curve of the dog. Now it may sound silly, Tom, how can you ruin a dog with food? It's very simple. Teaching a dog to follow you around a room and chase, chase food and lure without teaching behaviors is a big waste of your time. And if you're paying a trainer to help you do this, it's a big waste of your money as well. You really have to ask yourself, if you ask your dog to do a behavior, do you need that motivation to get them to do it or have they captured the behavior internally and understand it to the fullest amount ask yourself that seriously look at your dog right now think of your dog think of your training protocols and say if i ask my dog to down will they down if i ask my dog to sit will they do it without a prompted motivation and i'm only making this video because it creates such frustration with dog owners when they come in and they say, my dog has been through basic training before and they know sit, they know heel, they know down, and they know all of these things. And I get them out on a leash and I say, hey, Fido, sit. And the dog's looking at me like, I have no, A, I have no idea what that is. And B, even if I did know it, I'm not gonna do it because you're not serving me any food. So no way, Jose. The amount of frustration that can create between the handler and the dog is huge because I said, wait a minute, you said your dog knows these behaviors. Oh, well, they, they, they do, hold on, let me get you some food. Now for me, there's a significant difference between your dog uh, doing a circus uh, trick to get the food from you and kind of like a slot machine. At some point, it is gonna land on that behavior and the dog's gonna do it, but they don't know how to compartmentalize the behaviors and know them individually. Which for me, if I'm training basic obedience to sit because I don't want the dog to cross the road yet, to come back because I don't want them to get hit by a car, to heal because I don't want them to drag me down the road or so on and so forth. If they can't do those very basic things without food, then to me, there's absolutely no point in teaching that way. So I'm gonna go over a couple tips on how to wean your dog off of that food motivator. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is just tell you to replace 
your food motivator to the dog with your verbal marker. So when you're telling a dog to sit and they do it, you're then going to say, good sit, instead of good sit food. Good sit food. Because again, when you get that hot dog out with that food, it's tunnel vision, baby. I'm just gonna demonstrate what that looks like right now. Go to left. Yes, good left. There's one thing, Lakota heel. Good heel. Good heel, Lakota. Good. Lakota sit. Good sit. Left. Place. Good place. Left. Good left. Touch. Good. Stay. So there's maybe six or seven different things I've asked her to do. And then at the end of it, I'll then say, hey, good job, good stay, good everything else, good job, paying her for that. So for her and I, our relationship is very non-traditional because I'm paying her with food because she just performed really well. I marked the behaviors when she was doing it with my verbal. And that's the difference. So a lot of people will go, good heel, good sit, good down, good place, good left, good touch, right? And I did that with my voice instead of food. I just paid her at the end because she reached all my expectations like she normally does and I was happy with her performance. So I paid her a little bit of food for doing all of that stuff at the end of the obedience uh, trial that I just did. The second thing you can do is simply wean off of the treats that you give your dog in increments. So we're gonna combine the first thing we just did with hey, good job as you're doing it, so verbal praise. And then I'm gonna give her a piece of food maybe once every five or four times instead of every single time. Because this will then tell the dog, okay, I'm still doing the right thing, but I'm not getting stuffed like a pot belly full of hot dogs. And that's another really big reason why we don't depend on food in training is because if your dog is dependent on food for their reward and to let them know that they've done the right thing that you've asked them to do without just saying, hey, good job, and they go, okay, I've got it. If they're sitting there waiting for that food, they may think that they didn't do the right thing. If you go, oh crap, I forgot my treats, or, oh crap, I'm out. So that's the other big thing in the behavioral process and building a dog up is if your reward-based system every single time is food, 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 if you don't have that piece of food, they may think that they didn't do the right thing. And you'll oftentimes see dog go into a sit and you go, good sit. And they go, where's my food? You don't give it to them. And they go down because they're like, okay, now I'm a little bit confused. So that's the other reason why we aren't dependent on food in the preliminary stages of building a dog's foundational obedience. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to do incremental food delivery to the dog instead of every single time like you may be used to. Left, good left, heel. Good heel. Quarter sit, yes, good sit. Quarter down, yes, good down. Sit, yes, good sit, good job. So there you guys just saw, I was just teaching her that she's done everything I want her to do and she's still looking for that food, but she's not getting it every single time. So that's the other way you can start doing is just like we talked about in the beginning, replacing that food delivery with good, whatever the behavior you're asking, and then incrementally, maybe a treat, maybe not, doesn't matter. Come, good come. Go touch, yes, good touch. Lakota come, yes, good come. Go touch, good. Lakota come, yes, go ahead, touch. So there was another great example of just showing you guys incremental food delivery instead of every single time. She might have came to me and went back to the place five or six times, and then I gave her food at the end. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is just motivation delivery in general. How you present your dog with the motivation or the reward is a big factor in how much they work, how hard they work, and their engagement with the handler. So I saved this for last because this may be one of the harder things out of the things that we've talked about today for your dog if they're usually dependent on food or just reward-based systems in general. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your food so the dog knows that it's here, right? And then what you're going to do is you're maybe going to, I'm going to do this a couple different ways just to get creative with you guys because I want it to be scalable to everybody and I want you guys to be able to apply it to almost any situation. Not even if your dog's dependent or not. This is just a great opportunity for you to switch up your deliveries to get the dog more focused on you instead of the food. So I'm just going to take this food and this apparent napkin. I'm going to put it here. Now I'm going to take one of the pieces of food out of this. And this is just kibble, by the way. And I'm going to put it in my hand. 
So she's, she's, she knows the deal, but this is gonna be applicable to any dog. They're gonna be probably thinking that I'm gonna have to go from here to here, and then they're gonna be waiting for that transaction before they anticipate that payment. When in actuality, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay the dog randomly, so, he, so she, or he, depending on who you're training, realizes that it could come at any given time, and the most important thing is them focusing on the behavior at task and not the item that they're working for. Left. Good. Bless you. Bless you, sweet girl. So the food is in my pouch. She knows the focus teal, so she's a little bit different. But the chances of the dog that's usually dependent on food looking at the pouch is likely. So the dog is looking, looking, looking. S left. Go to sit. Good. Yes. Good. Touch. So it's a secondary source of food for the dog because she didn't know that I had it in my hand. So she's like, wait, wait, wait. You mean it doesn't have to come from here. So what happens is, is the dog just says, okay, I'm really getting paid for the task at hand versus go to left, heel, versus looking here, go touch. And that's really what matters to you as the handler. Now this last piece of training is a little bit more advanced, but if you want to take your engagement to the next level and trying to separate the motivation from the actual behavior, Here's what I suggest. First and foremost, to get a little bit more advanced in training, you have to use a little bit more training tools or equipment. So I'm using a D-Town vest, which is a dog training vest that you can store and uh, keep your supplies in, your phone, your watch, your wallet, whatever it may be, as well as your reward-based systems. So in the back, I have a 12-inch canine tactical tug, and in this little uh, pocket here, which is see-through, which is also great if you're teaching a dog uh, engagement on you as the handler because the dog can see the uh, item that they're working for. And this little pouch is a ball um, that was broken off by one of our shepherds and I had a piece of leather around and I made into a tug. So now I have three motivations on me. I have food here in the front, I have my ball on a tug here, and then I have my normal tug in the back. And now the advanced step here is, is what I would call maybe motivational proofing. I don't know, I just made it up. But what it does is she knows that there's gonna be many different items for her to choose from or get paid uh, all, all together. So what she knows is, is there's three different ways for her to get paid and she loves them all. And so I'm gonna proof her throughout this process to pay her when she's actually paying attention to me and not the item at hand. And so she's a little bit more advanced because she's my dog and I've been working with her since she was a puppy but I just wanna show you how you guys can recreate this at home. She's out of practice, I don't train her every day, but in videos like this, when we're in quarantine and we don't have a ton of dogs to choose from like normal, I'm gonna be using her as a demonstration. So my goal is going to be getting her out and then offering her a reward on the ground without releasing her, so she can't really get it. But she should be focused on it and your dog should be definitely focused on it if they're not practicing this type of uh, advanced obedience and engagement in general. So I'm gonna show you how this works. Left, good, heel, good, good girl, good girl. So she's very engaged with me, which I like. Good girl, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take this tug out, left, good girl. Good, yes, good. So what I did there, guys, good girl. A touch, see you later, alligator. She looked at the tug when I threw it, and then she looked right back up at me, and as soon as she gave me, gave me that redirectional, hey, never mind, I wanna pay attention to you because I think that the fun actually comes from you, and I say, yes, it does, and then I release her because I'm paying her for the engagement into me. So ultimately, at the end of the day, for you guys and your dog, you want the dog to engage with you, and then you release them. So you're actually paying them through the release, your break command, to get the tug and then play tug with you, once they're focused in on you. I'm gonna take that a step further, I'm gonna pay her from me. So I'm gonna throw the tug and I'm gonna get the other tug out, but I'm gonna ask her to do a little bit more obedience, a little bit more advanced. So I'm gonna ask her for a little bit more focus here. A little bit advanced, a little bit of everything. Left, good, heel. Good heel, good. So I'm gonna take that tug Left, I'm gonna ask her to do some obedience first. Good, good girl. She's looking at me, she's expecting this reward, yes. 
and I'm paying her there. What I did, just to run you through, is she was expecting this because she can see it. She knows it's there. She's a clever girl. But what I did is I proofed her. I said, nope, it's actually gonna go right there. And then she goes and gets that. So in lamest terms, mix it up. Don't let her or yourself be predictable in any way to keep it spicy, baby. So now I'm gonna do it again and use all three motivations, food, ball, and tug. But what I'm gonna do is because of this detown vest has two pouches, I'm gonna switch it over here because my dogs are always handled on the left side. So she's gonna be here. Left, good, heel. So I'm gonna proof her with my hand in this pocket, which her assumption is then gonna be, okay, the ball is coming out of the right hand. Good. Here comes the tug out from the back. Left. Good, good girl. So for, for beginners, this is really good. Focus, 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 good focus. At that moment, you might wanna pay, but she's a little bit more advanced, so I'm gonna move her a little bit more. Good heel. Eyes on me, baby, eyes on me. Good girl. Good heel, lots of positive reinforcement. Just like we talked about in the beginning. Your voice is good enough, guys. Your dog loves you. Left. Good heel. Good. I'm gonna walk right around this tug. Hopefully you guys can see this in frame. So she's walking around her tug. If I get this focus for a little bit longer, she's gonna get paid with the ball. Yes. Woo, she's got a double. She's got a double. Good girl, good girl. So a little crazy, but that's, that's the fun of having fun with your dog. Okay, so what I was doing there, guys, is I was just telling her that, hey, you don't have to focus on what you think the item is. So I'm switching it up to keep her engaged on the only thing that matters. I am the gatekeeper. I'm the one who tells her what she can and can't do. So with these steps, I hope it's helpful for you guys to figure out how to wean off of that motivation simply from the first step of getting away from food and maybe using an item because an item is way more engaging with you and your dog. You're able to work on a lot of impulse control the dog wants it, the dog wants it, the dog wants it left. Do something for me. Do something again. Do something again. Let me hear what you got to say. Watch him. Good girl, yes, good girl. So you're able to really engage with your dog with play. And I made a video before uh, because a lot of people, veterinarians and other different type of trainers will say, playing tug with your dog can make them aggressive. Under most circumstances, that's not true. You can watch that video in the link above. But anyway, um, if you guys haven't yet, don't forget, like, subscribe to, the, to my channel. I'll be uh, putting out these videos as much as I possibly can. The link to the D-Town vest is gonna be listed below. Um, you can get them in different colors. You can get them in different sizes, of course. And there's a bunch of different great things on that, on that uh, website you guys can check out to make your dog training experience just one level up. I appreciate you guys. I will talk to you next time. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. And it's a ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. And it's a ticket talking mother for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it. I'm a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it, get it, get it. Comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. And it's a ticket.